Hello, welcome to MATLAB video series, Chapter 5, Two-Dimensional Plots. Plots are a very useful tool for presenting information, especially in science and engineering. There are many kinds of plots, standard plots with linear axis, plots with logarithmic and semi-logarithmic axis, bar and stair plots, polar plots, 3D plots, etc. How to use the plot command? You write plot x comma y where x and y are both vectors and they should have the same number of elements. Here is a plot of the data x and y. You get a solid blue line connecting all the data points. So blue is the default color. We have lots of specifiers available. First is the line specifier. We can change the line style. If we want a dashed line, you put a double dash as a string dotted line, a colon, and dash dot, you put dash and a dot. For line color specifiers, if you want to change the color of your line, the default color is blue as we know, so for black we have the letter K, yellow Y, magenta M, cyan C, red R, and green G. There are marker type specifiers as well. The marker types are as follows, for the plus sign, you put the plus sign, circle, the letter O, asterisk, that's a star, point, so you just put a dot, cross, triangle pointed up, or triangle pointed down, that's the letter V here, square, the letter S, diamond, D, five-pointed star, six-pointed star, triangle pointed to the left, and triangle pointed to the right. Notes about specifiers. The specifiers are typed inside the plot command, as strings. Within the string, the specifiers can be typed in any order. The specifiers are optional. That is, you can have none, one, two, or all three can be included in a command. Here are some examples of the various plot commands that you will come across. Plot XY. It's a blue solid line connecting the points with no markers. Plot XY as green line connects the points. Plot XY as a double dashed line which connects the points as a cyan dashed line. Plot XY asterisk, the points are marked with asterisk, so there is no line between the points. Plot XY G colon D, so it's a green dotted line connecting the points that are marked with diamond markers. The property name and property value. You can change the line width using the property name, line width. By default, it is having a thickness of 0.5. So you can specify the thickness of your line. Marker size, it specifies the size of the marker. Marker edge color, specifies the color of the marker or the color of the edge line for filled markers. Marker face color, specifies the color of the filling for filled markers. This is another example where I've used the plot command. Plot XY MS. It implies it connects the points with the magenta solid line and squares as markers at the points. Line width 2. So the line has a width 2 or thickness 2. Marker size 12. Marker edge color should be green and marker face color should be red. Here is a plot for a data containing year values and the sales. So write them as a vector, then plot year comma sales, red dotted line, and the data points will be as square markers here. And the line width is given as 2, mark of size is 12, and mark of face color Y, which means yellow, and mark of edge color K. So that is a black edge color for the marker. So this is the figure you will get for that command. Let's have a look at this function here. We can plot this in two different ways. First is, let's discuss the dots method. So you define x using the linspace command from negative 3 to 4. Then define the function as given in the question with the dots before every power or exponentiation then 
multiplication and division if there is a division and plot x comma y if we don't want to put the dots MATLAB can put the dots for you and evaluate the function using the eval vectorize command so you define y uh, sorry x using the colon now you can define x using the lint space command or the colon notation now y is equal to eval vectorize write the function as a string and always make sure you have a semicolon for all the graphical questions plot x comma y as red and you get the desired graph so both methods are okay if you don't want to put the dots you can use the eval vectorize function wherein the function is typed as a string the fplot command it plots a function of the form y equal f of x between specified limits the command has the form fplot you write the function in single quotes that is as a string limits and line specifiers limits means the domain of x so that is a mandatory field and optionally the limits of y line specifiers that is the specifiers that define the type and color of the line and markers so that is also optional there is a note the function cannot have any predefined variables so it should purely be in terms of the independent variable here is an example for the plotting using fplot command you write fplot the function is a string comma the limits that is negative 2 to 2 and the y-axis limit which is optional negative 5 to 10 plotting multiple graphs on the same plot there are three methods to plot multiple graphs in the same figure first we have the plot command then the line command hold on hold off using the plot command two or more graphs can be created in the same plot by typing pairs of vectors inside the plot command so plot x y u v t h these are pairs of vectors so it creates three graphs y versus x v versus u and h versus t the vectors of each pair must be of the same length it is also possible to add line specifiers to each pair so plot x y dash b u v dash red and t h a dotted green line method two is using the hold on hold off commands one graph is plotted first with the plot command then hold on command is typed additional graphs can be added with plot commands that are typed next formatting a plot the formatting commands are entered after the plot or the fplot commands the various formatting commands are the x label y label which is used to label the axis so you type x label and then the label that you want to put as a string similarly the y label title command also works the same way it puts a title for your plot the text is placed at the top of a figure as a title the text command a text label can be placed in the plot with the text command as follows text x comma y text as a string the text command places the text in the figure such that the first character is positioned at the point with the coordinates x comma y legend legend shows a sample of the line type of each graph that is plotted and places a label specified by the user beside the line sample the form of the command is legend then string 1 that is the name of the first plot you did then string 2 string 3 etc and then the position strings are the labels placed next to the line sample order corresponds to the order in which the graphs are plotted and POS is an optional number which specifies where in the figure the legend is placed these are the different numbers you can use for the POS commands and the meaning for each of one uh, zero if you type zero it places the legend inside the axis boundaries in a location that interferes the least with the graphs the axis command when the plot XY command is executed MATLAB creates axes with limits that are based on the minimum 
and maximum values of the elements of x and y. The axis command can be used to change the range and appearance of the axis. First we have axis, then x min x max, y min y max in square brackets. It sets the limit of both the x and y axis. Axis equal sets the same scale for both the axis. Axis square sets the axis region to be a square. Axis tight sets the axis limits to the range of the data. Here is an example for a plot to compare the light density measured using theory and experimental values on the same plot. If x is the distance, the intensity y by theory is y equals 95,000 over x square. Plot the theoretical values as a solid magenta line of line width 2 and experimental data points as diamonds connected by a dashed green line. So first of all you create the vector x then you can use the eval vectorize command to evaluate y for all the hundred values of x between 10 and 22. xd we are defining xd as given in the question with increment of 2 for the data points and yd refers to the data point as given in the question. Plot xy as a magenta solid line with line with 2 grid on, hold on, x label, y label title. Then you can choose the axis limits if you want. So you have the x min, x max and y min, y max. And we can also put a text say at the data point 12, 700. Comparison between theory and, and experiment. You can give an edge color for the box. So that'll be in red. Hold on. Plot xd, yd as a double dash green line connected with diamond markers. So legend will be theory, experiment as string and in position 1. That is the top right corner. So we see that there is a close uh, relation between the theory and the experimental values. Next we come to plots with log axis semi log y x comma y plots y versus x with log scale that is base 10 for the y axis and linear scale for the x axis semi log x x comma y plots y versus x with a log scale for the x axis and linear scale for the y axis log log x y plots y versus x with a log scale for both the y axis and the x axis next we have the polar plots Polar coordinates in which the position of the point is defined by the angle and the radius, that is the distance to the point, are frequently used in science and engineering pro problems. The command polar, theta, comma, radius and then the line specifiers. Plot the function where f for when theta is between 0 to 2 pi, r is 3 cosine square 0 0.5 theta plus theta. So define t then evaluate r using the eval vectorize command and polar t comma r plotting multiple plots on the same page multiple plots on the same page can be created with the subplot command which has the form subplot m n p that means there are three parameters m refers to the number of rows n to the number of columns and p the position where you want to display the graph so we have 3 to 1, 3 to 2, 3 to 3, 3 to 4, 3 to 5 and 3 to 6. So this command creates 6 areas arranged in 3 rows and 2 columns and then each position is chosen according to the command. Plot this function in the same page as separate plots when x varies between 0 0.1 and 60. When we want the result to be in the same page, we should use the subplot command. First is we have to use the linear axis, then using x-axis on log scale, next is y-axis on the log scale, and last using both axes on the log scale. So define x, then find the values for y using the eval vectorize function, 
subplot 2 to 1. That means there are two rows, two columns, and in position 1. Plot x, comma y. So this will give us a linear plot between x and y. Give the label and title and grid on. Subplot 2, 2, 2, second row, second column, second position. Semilog x, x, comma y. This will give the plot with x axis on the log scale. Subplot 2, 2, 3. So two rows, two column, and the third position. Semilog y, x, comma y. So this will give the plot with y axis on log scale. And last, we have subplot 2, 2, 4. That is the fourth position. Log, log, x, comma y. Both x and y will be on the log scale. Next is how to plot multiple figure windows. To plot figures on different windows, we use the figure command as follows. Plot the functions f of x equals x cos x, g of x equals e to the negative 0.2 x cos x, when x is between 0 and 10. So here, we've used just the f plot command, then figure. So the figure command should come just before the next plot command. So we get the two figures in two windows. We'll work on some questions from your textbook, Gilat. Question 1. A parametric equation is given by the following equations. Plot the function for t between 0 and 2 pi. Format the plot such that both the axes will range from negative 2 to 2. Define t. Evaluate x and y. Use the plot function, plot x, comma y. Grid on, x label, y label, and put a title. Now, let's just run this graph. We get this. Now, the question tells, format the plot such that both axes will range from negative 2 to 2. So here we can see that the axis is ranging from negative 1.5 to 1.5 for both x and y. To change the axis limits, we have the axis command. So you put negative 2, 2 for the x-axis, negative 2, 2 for the y-axis. Now we can run this again and we get the desired axis limits. We'll move on to question number 2. Plot the function f of x is a rational function where x is between negative 6 and 6. Notice that the function has two vertical asymptotes. So we can see from here the vertical asymptote is at x equal 3 and at x equal negative 2. Plot the function by dividing the domain of x into three parts, one for negative 6 to near the left asymptote, one between the two asymptotes, and one from near the right asymptote to 6. Set the range of y-axis from negative 20 to 20. Now, we want this on a new window, so let's use the figure command. So figure command should be used before any plot command. X is equal to lint space, negative 6 to negative 2.001, because that was our left asymptote at negative 2. Then evaluate y with the dots, hold on, plot x, y, g, so that much part of the graph will be plotted. Then again, define x as one, negative 1.99 to 2.99, evaluate y, then continue till you are complete with the entire rational function. Now we have to change the axis limits using axis command. So axis negative 6 to 6, which is the x-axis limits, and negative 20 to 20, which is the y-axis limits. Now we can plot the vertical asymptotes as well. So plot negative 2, 2, which is for the vertical asymptote at x equal negative 2. And the y points will be negative 20 and 20. Next vertical asymptote is at x equal 3. So 3, 3 in square brackets, negative 20, 20 in another square bracket. And it will be plotted as a magenta dashed line. You can put the grid on, title, for the rational function. And we can run this. So it comes in figure 2. That's all for now. Thank you.